Hello and welcome to the Everything Canada Everything Canada Soccer Podcast episode number eight, our two month anniversary here, as always with Felipe. Hey, hey. All right. Yeah, two months. So. Yeah, two months. It's it's felt like it's it's flew it's flown by. Honestly, like I can't believe it's already been this long. But you know, lots of lots to talk about. Always something happening in Canada soccer now, which is so nice because before. There would never be stuff going on and it'd be hard to find content. But now it just seems like there's so many different storylines and so many different avenues that we can talk about. But mostly we'll be focusing on the Canadian Championship fixtures from last night, which in all honesty wasn't the most shocking results. But in the way that they happened, specifically with Toronto and Montreal, that was a bit shocking. So I guess we'll yep. just start We'll just start with that game, honestly. 4-0 to Toronto over Montreal. Yeah, I, I thought it was shocking. Like, I mean, I wasn't expecting that, to be honest with no. you. Uh, sure, we could say, like, you know, especially because the game was at the BMO field, like, we could expect Toronto to win. They were playing at home, mm-hmm. sure. But uh, Montreal did, came, like, they did lost, I think, last game on MLS. So they come from a bad yeah. result as well at home to Austin, which is a new yeah. team. Um, mm-hmm. Relatively new. But, yeah, so so I just think that, like, I thought that they were going to try to fight harder. Wasn't expecting that for real. So, right. Especially yeah, the knows, way it happened. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. Like, okay, so you're 1 0 down at half. Okay, not too bad. You go 2 0 down. But then just the way that the third and fourth goal just came at quick succession, it's like they just kind of just, just gave up as a team. I mean, to be fair, they hadn't played since May 28th, and then they played June 18th, just five days ago. And then two games in five days when you've had no games yeah. in like ha- two and a half weeks. Like I'm not sure who or why or, or like why or who scheduled that way. I think it's a little bit harsh. I know the international window was in that kind of space, but at the same time, MLS has never, never, they never ever break. So they never break. It they doesn't just, make they just play. So it was a little bit odd. Yeah. It was a little odd just to see that um, for Montreal just to be, that out of it because they were the best team for in Canada for like the entire season and now they're slipping down. Yep. So it's like how like they haven't been in this position yet and what do they need to do to turn it around? Yeah, and and I feel like there was a stage that they were controlling a bit of the actions in the game just for a small moment. Mm-hmm. And then boom, like like I think it was two goals in two minutes. <laughs> you know, like yes. two goals in three minutes. Uh, they, they were losing already by 2-0, but they could try to tie or make the game a bit harder. And then right yeah. there, two goals, to, like they just crushed down. Like, it could even be a 5-0 uh, after yeah. that. But, yeah, like, I, I actually watched it only the last two goals. I didn't watch the first two goals. So, mm-hmm. but, yeah, like, it's, well, it, think, it is yeah. what it is. Uh, Montreal does have a, a, a good roster, so they can definitely come back and, you know, yeah get back on their feet and keep moving forward and keep making to the playoffs. We're talking about that a, a few podcasts ago. It is important for mm-hmm. them to be a stable team and make farther as, as they can in the playoffs because we do have players such as Kamal Miller, maybe Brent Gillard, uh, uh, maybe Piete, like quite a few players that plays on mm-hmm. national team that might go to the World Cup that we need them in shape. So the best way for them to be in shape is if Montreal keeps it's winning. The playoffs. Yeah, and then make sure well, they're, they're at least uh, farther in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're they're fifth right now in the standings, and that's with like a, a big break and everything like that. Still have a a game or two on a couple, a game at hand or two on the teams above them. So they're in a good spot, but it's it's now it's two it's two poor results, as well as like and one of them was a thrashing to their nearest Canadian rival. So it's it's gonna be hard for them. I think to kind of easily recapture that form, but at the yep. same time, they were able to stay high in the standings throughout the rest of the season. So they had they they know what they're doing, and they only have to finish seventh. They were close last season. We didn't have a Canadian team in there, but on the Toronto side of things, which I think is a little bit more exciting to talk about, they just they Toronto always they just seem to find their their stride in the Canadian Championship. It's like their one the one thing that they always seem to be successful at. I mean, they just beat Forge in the 2020. So you could argue that they already kind of had sort of the, 
they were already were the favorites and expected to win since they had just played in a big game. Montreal haven't played in an actual big game in a while, not since the last final they played against Toronto. Or was it, yeah, against Toronto? So it's a bit, it's a bit tough to, it's a bit tough on Montreal considering Toronto it just, it just seems to be their thing. Yep, and uh, I don't know. Like we'll see how the next game is gonna go in the Canadian Championship because surprisingly I'm seeing the the White Caps there. You know, it's not a team that I yeah, wanted right? to see and I expect it to see. Uh, yeah. Definitely not the the greatest form, but they made it and yeah um, it is a derby vancouver. so you know anything yeah. can happen vancouver i was i was really hoping it'd be a york toronto final because i think it'd be cool yep. to see two toronto teams go at it yeah but we got vancouver so it's a west versus east coast which usually not usually ends up happening vancouver vancouver usually lose earlier in the canadian championship and then it's usually toronto and montreal or whatever but vancouver Honestly, dominated York United yesterday. York United were in bad form going into this game, so it wasn't that much of a surprise. I mean, they probably Vancouver. You could argue could have scored could have scored more. They did have seventeen shots, so that's definitely a statistic. Only six of them on target yet, but still, that's you know you yeah, get a more as volume. Many, for sure. Yeah, more volume for York. Seven shots, three on target. Yeah. Like they just didn't yeah. trouble them enough. Possession more. Passes, Gotta understand that. that uh, so, sorry for interrupting, but just just okay. to kind of added that, um, you know, like I know that they have you know low right, like it's right now it's with the Canadian U twenty playing the the FIFA World Cup, like World mm-hmm. Cup U twenty qualifier, whatever it's called, yeah. and um, he hasn't scored a single goal in the CPL, but he is a guy that battles a lot at the front, like. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like he's a Makes it similar hard. body, similar body type than Jonathan David. Actually, like yeah. if you look at his, like body anatomy, let's say the similar to Kyle Aaron as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And it is an important player on that squad. And I just feel like not having him, it's uh, it does decrease. They're actually uh, like they have to play with Cabrera, which was playing mm-hmm. already with right. Uh, but I don't know what's the other right. striker that played. I don't know their name. Like uh, Isaiah guy. Isaiah Johnston, who was the Johnston, one that, which he scored, scored the goal, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, my point is just like I feel like they probably lost a bit of the offense right yeah. there with Low Wright. So, well, yeah, without Lowell right there, you know, providing that kind of physical aspect to these center backs that, in in all honesty, are strong. It's but it still surprised me that York couldn't have. I feel like they could have played, could have at least taken it to the halfway out. I don't, I don't understand how York are in such bad form. They have, they have good players. Abzi's gone, but he played last night. That was his last game, I yep. believe. Um, Zatar is Dominic a good Zator. defender. He's yeah. freaking great when he's here with Cavalry. He helped the he, he scored one of the goals that helped Cavalry beat Vancouver. Yep. Um, the Rosario, the which Rosario. we talked a few times. Yeah. You know, uh, he was actually uh, playing as a as a winger yesterday, like left winger, mm-hmm. I think, or yeah. midfielder. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like has the skill set to play as a striker. You know, has a skill mm-hmm. set to play on the sides. Like I like him. But you're absolutely right. They are, they are not living up to what we expected from them. Uh, no. At least not not me and yourself. Maybe someone else was expecting them to to go low. And they yeah, also got a great goalie. So. Yeah, Giansopoulos like, is great. He's easily a starter for every every almost every team in the CPL. He would start for. Yeah. That's why he. That's why he moved away from Cavalry is because he was playing back up to the best goalkeeper in the league, Carducci, and he needed some time elsewhere. He was great every time he came in, but he needed to go somewhere else. So tough result for York, but at the same time, they they're just in bad form at the moment. Like there's nothing much that they can really. Like, yeah, maybe this is, should be a big game for them to be a bit more motivated for. But the stats, they don't lie. Vancouver had the better chances. Yep. So, tough. So, that sets up a, uh, a sorry, a Vancouver versus Toronto final. Now, who do you think would come on top of that? Because, obviously, 
that's a wild way. When when is it scheduled? The Canadian Championship. It's uh, I think it's it's not determined yet. Um, they haven't announced. Yeah. They'll probably announce soon, and then they haven't announced either. Like I don't know what the game is going to be, uh, but I yeah. assume. Like by the way, the bracket looks like on the Canada Soccer website. I assume will be in Vancouver, but yeah. I could be wrong. Could be in the BMO, um, but I assume it will be in. Uh, I think I saw that. BC place. I think I saw that it was at BMO, BMO Field. Could be. I think it Could is be. BMO Field. But yeah, I'm not sure how they would determine that. Uh, maybe it, it's because it, rotation. If you go to the Canada Soccer uh, bracket on their website, it says match. Uh, match winner eleven first on yeah. the top, and usually the top it's the hosting team, like the team that plays oh, at home, okay. right? And match so winner like number eleven was was Whitecaps, but uh, again, you, they could you mm-hmm. know change that, right? So yeah, f- figure that out. I, I'm debating. I think I'm going to cancel my trip in August to go to a CPL game, and I think I'm going to hold off my money and save up to go to either the Canadian Championship final or CPL final, one of those two. Yeah, so I think that'd be that's really definitely cool. more I think exciting. Be really cool to go to, for sure. Definitely, for sure. yeah. Um, but yeah, so Toronto versus Vancouver in the final. I don't know who would win that. That's tough. Let's see. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for the Whitecaps. To be honest with you, the Whitecaps. Uh, I can't yeah, they the haven't. So, so, I'll tell you why. Uh, well, I'm upset, of course, that, that the Cavs lost to them. We were there, right? And it was a penalty. Yeah, yeah. It was dramatic. You was said. Yeah. Uh, it went from like picking your energy to fear, but uh, I, I don't know, man. The Whitecaps are probably out of the big like three MLS teams, like, oh, they're not the big, but the three MLS teams, the one that have the least, mm-hmm. I think they only have one or two, uh, yeah, and they haven't won in a long time. So, I think it would just be good to see something different than Toronto or Montreal. So, so that's what I'm saying. I, I think yeah. Whitecaps are gonna just because I'm cheering for them, right? So yeah, and actually to help BC soccer grow as well and Western because it's the East that kind of dominates this, dominates the sport in, in Canada, even though the West has produced the greatest player that Canada's ever seen in Alfonso Davies. So you can kind of yeah. you know, argue that. But I would like to see Vancouver win. Maybe Alfonso Davies will make an appearance. Probably not because at that time, Bayern Munich will probably be in full swing and you're up, it's, the footy schedule will be on. And so the final must be before November and October because oh, they yeah. can't play it in no. November because that's the World Cup. I don't think there is any player, with all the respect to the league, but I don't think there are any players in this league that will play this World Cup. Um, not because of level, because we do have players that play internationally. Yeah. It's just their national teams have not qualified, right? So it's just yeah. the way it is. Um but now that the FIFA announced that the squads will be bigger, usually mm-hmm. what they do is they usually they announce the squads and they announce three or four more players to fulfill squads if there were any injuries yeah. or if there are any yeah. injuries. Mm-hmm. But maybe those players that are on the backup, they might get a younger player. Uh, but yeah. who knows, right? Like it's something that we – a chance of choosing a player from like Nelson or something like, like that from Toronto, yeah. it's, it's higher, you know, so mm-hmm. – uh, yeah, no, it'll be interesting to see what our squad looks like for the World Cup. It's it's definitely like there's definitely it's getting there. Like that starting eleven that we have is like fantastic, but it's the pieces that come on the outside that you're like, okay, if we have to take off a player, or if you stack, you gets injured, how can we cope? Or if let's say um, Kyle Laren isn't isn't performing well at the World Cup for or leading up to the World Cup, then what does our attack look like? Because Jonathan David and Kyle Lahren usually play together. That's a lot of where the yep. success comes from because they play off each other. So it's kind of like, who can we look to? For like, Lahren? Backup. Like for for our attack, for example, who's our backup out of that? <laughs> so if we don't have those two, what do we do? Do we throw Fonzie up there? Then what happens with, no, our, no. Le- with our left side, you know? Like, I think I think we have some players that do need to step up their game but um, on the national level, but if they scored goals already. They've been in the call-ups already. Like, we have Iki Ukebo, we have uh, Cavallini, mm-hmm. 
uh, Cavalini That's just right. score That's goals. Can't always forget. Actually, he's getting some good form. Hopefully, he can. Uh, yeah. Maybe if he wins the uh, Canadian Championship with Vancouver, he'll be in a, in a much better mindset than he was at the beginning yeah. of the season. And he's being That'd a leader, be right? He takes the penalties. Like he, yeah. he fights at the front. Even when he's not having a good match, he'll hustle. Like he, yeah, he, he's you can a, he's see his leadership player. on the field. So, so I, yeah. I don't dislike him. Uh, no. Of course, there are more. Like, but we also have uh, Theo Bear, which transferred to Scotland. Did not yeah. get too much too many minutes this season, I think, because of injuries and things like that. But it's Scot- right. Scottish Premiership starting again in August, August or September. So he has mm-hmm. a chance to be in form. And he's a striker, young striker, playing in the European League First Division. That's, uh, yeah, that's exciting to see more Canadians, honestly. Finally, yeah. more Canadians yeah. are actually, like, doing, Brent, doing bets in Europe. Brent playing First Division in the Netherlands as well. So, yeah, there, there are talents. Mm-hmm. It's, it's strikers that are young. They just yeah. need to... They just need to stand out. They need to do something positive this next six months so we can yeah. trust them as a good backup. It's it's good to see them move out now, although it's a bit of a no offense or anything, but the players that have moved out to Europe right now, like the young ones or like the early 20s, I don't think they'll actually ever really make an impact in like the first team of the national team, but they are. I think they're paving the way for Canadians oh, in yeah. the future. I think that's their, their purpose. And there may be a couple that, you know, step up and, you know, play in the World yeah. Cup and have an impact. But I think their impact Ideally, is paving away. That, like, we, we discussed that here already, the exchange of culture, like getting to play in different markets and, and understanding uh, football at an international level at different, in, at different countries. It's key for the development of your own national, like, team and your own yeah. national football and et cetera. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know, like, just, just look at that. Brazil is the country that exports the most uh, um, footballers to any other country on earth. If you go to, like, Thailand League, you're going to find a few Brazilians playing there. Like, that's yeah. how it is, right? Uh, yeah, I'm talking about thousands, thousands of... We talk about a few, like, six or five that get a semester moved to Europe from Canada. Talk about thousands of Brazilians moving yeah. to minor leagues in Europe and etc., even North America. Now, mm-hmm. how many makes the national team? Only 23 of them. Maybe 20 because yeah. sometimes there are players in the Brazilian league that makes it. So uh, it's not the idea of going to Europe and making the national team. No, it's paving the way. It's exactly what you said. Paving the way yeah. so we can mm-hmm. have more exchange, more players coming here, more Canadian players going there, learning yeah. more, becoming maybe idols in a small club in, in Scotland. Like Victor Loturi yeah. right, right now just went to a small club in Scotland. If he plays mm-hmm. that 10 years, become an idol there, maybe never get called up to a national team, that's still a beautiful story. You know what I mean? That's something that... Yeah. Oh, of he, course. He, he, he built a career out of that. So uh, mm-hmm. I feel like that's what we should appreciate and we should, like, like see oh, the value yeah. on it. You know, it's like I think we have, the way. It's yeah. like opening the gates. Yeah, we have to recognize that. Like, there's, like, I remember a player... The only Canadian player I knew of when I was younger was a... I think his name was Thomas Redzinski. He was yeah. a... Uh, like a like a Canadian, I remember, I, I forget who he, I think he played in the Premier League. I can't remember, yeah. but he was the only Canadian I ever heard of, and I always remember his name just because he was on a, a stupid little picture book I had as a kid. Um, but it's like it was that's what these players are going to do across Europe is when they go there, you know, some kid or a couple of kids from like other countries are going to see, you know, like your Victor Latoury or your Brim or whoever else it is and they're going to see him and they're going to be like oh you're can you're not from here you're canadian and it's going to just like then canada as a whole gets more recognition gets a little bit more respect because we've exported a player from our own country into europe which is where everything is judged on like no one cares if you like no one cares if you won the south american cup that's cool but at the same time Everyone's always looking to Europe. They may like in terms of mainstream. Yep. Like it's like for the for if a club wins the South America, what is it? The uh, Ch- uh, Libertadores. Libertadores. Yeah, the Liberta- Ch- yeah, the Libertadores. Um, if they do that, like obviously you're Brazilian, you love that competition and you want your team to win it. But yep. from like just some from some normie American, they don't care about that. They care about oh, you know, absolutely. Champions League. Same with the same with the Americans don't even. 
Yeah. They don't even care about MLS, right? If you really think about it, yeah. they still watch like European oh, leagues. Oh, up until and up Champions until this League, page, so. I didn't care too much. Up until this, I created this and started CPL. getting more passionate. Eh. I yeah, literally up until CPL, I didn't, I could care less about an MLS. So I'll, now I'm a bit I'll more be invested. honest with you. Me too. I was living in Winnipeg at the time. Uh, I I mm-hmm. even remember until now days, like, um, you know, I used to work with marketing at this agency that sometimes we stay after hours like doing some work mm-hmm. and they had a huge like print shop and things like that and uh, um, the red river rising which is the name of the yeah their, their fans you know they mm-hmm. wanted to print their banner right so the guys come by and print their banner and i'm looking yeah. at the banner i was like what is that it's like a football club and they're like oh no it's the canadian league is joining etc uh oh, so yeah. i was like oh that's that's interesting so i started researching and i went to valor's fc first official match ever yeah uh, in yeah the cpl it That's wasn't cool. great atmosphere in terms of a game and we can touch that after on the stadium and etc but it yeah. was uh it was a good moment for me to see you know football starting in canada as the own professional league. yeah uh but it was funny yeah. to see because there's a lot of people that got invites to the game you see some people like kick the puck you know like making fun yeah, like yeah. that uh <laughs> but uh overall it was still it was still a fun match it was against that <laughs> oh, no against the Halifax. Yeah. Uh, Wanderers, so it was a good. Did you did, did they win that? Uh, I think it was a tie. You know Petrasso that played for York United after two. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. he scored a penalty goal for Valor FC, and then for played for Valor. That's right. Yes, uh, he was the first yeah. year there. Yeah. Yeah. Bustos Bustos was a player for 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 Valor at the season. Uh, Ali Moose was playing for Valor. Uh, yeah. Tyson Farago from. Cavs were playing for Valor. It's quite a few players that were already out. They were playing all the CPL teams that were there. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I'm just sorry. I was just looking at uh, Marco Bustos for uh, Valor. That's yeah, he played it. I'm sorry. That's that's weird to see him in a Valor kit. Like, <laughs> that's I his first like, team him. in the yeah. CPL, you know. Did he uh, did he was he there that entire se- first season? Yeah. I think like yeah. like he does have a connection to BC, right? Because he does come from uh, the White yeah. Caps Academy, so yeah, um, comes from the background for sure. But yeah, he's a, he's a Winnipeg kid, so you know, yeah, he Shoot. makes sense. He yeah. played the first uh, the first uh, um, CPL season with a Winnipeg team. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's funny. The first the, what I remember about the first season, I was at the first game for Calvary as well. We didn't have a roof on our on our on the main stand. There was no roof and it was snowing, of course, because yeah. why wouldn't it be snowing on May fourth, twenty nineteen? And um, it was like I told you a story about them, like of them like bashing the seats when it was a corner kick, and we ended up scoring off of it. Crowd going nuts and everything. But I do remember our it was one of the last games that season, and we I think we we traveled to yeah we traveled to Valor and beat them eight nothing. Damn. Yeah, I don't remember yeah. that, but that's good. That's that's solid. It was the it's it's still the it's still the biggest uh, victory defeat. Margin. Yeah, and, tough to yeah, see though, and, especially looking at the competitiveness of the league now. Yeah, I don't find like I I don't see games like that. Um, the only one was Valor Atletico this season where they won six one. That was the only, and then Forge yep. won four nothing against Halifax, or is it Halifax? Yeah. Four nothing against Halifax, but yeah. I don't. I don't consider four nothing an abs- a thrashing or anything like that or embarrassing, because no. like usually that happens when a team gets to, like their two down goals down and then a team gets a third goal and they just kind of like drop a little bit. Yeah, like I mean, I feel like it's a lot of and then the fourth just happens. Once you get to that stage, it's 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 all mental, right? Like if if the team yeah. doesn't get their brain like their mentality together yeah. he, he opens the gate and then it can it can be anything like i've seen that happening in world cup with top-notch teams like brazil and germany 2014 yeah. 7-1 yeah. right yeah like the the players you can see like like half time some players are going crying you know and yeah. that's only like four goals you know five mm-hmm. goals four goals and they still let that two other yeah. happen it's because you just lose your emotional like you're not you're not holding your stuff together right it's better to lose by two yeah. than lose by seven uh yeah. but at that stage you're not really thinking you're just act like you're just doing it right yeah especially so, at home and everything with your all your fans and it's the most it's yeah. the greatest world cup 
it's a semi final. No, was it a semi final? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. A there was multiple multiple things wrong. Like we we don't need to go over that because you know, like, like I said, I'm Brazilian, so that's no, no, it's it's me. tough. But I mean, uh, but I, mean, I was just gonna say like yeah, uh, there was no Neymar, no Thiago Silva. Yeah. Uh, you had Fred up front. Fred up front. <laughs> Uh, and, and not just that, like like the coach itself, it's pretty pragmatic. It's a coach that won the yeah. 2002 World Cup, but never like never evolved as much. So uh, what happened is like his his football mentality was it's old school, right? Yeah. So we needed someone more like like Law, like from Germany. He's a he's a mm-hmm. modern coach. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and that's the reason why they beat us because. They had a better team, but they also had a better coaching system, a federation yeah. that wasn't involved on money making on that World Cup, which Brazil was hosting that World Cup, but there was a lot of corruption behind that. Uh, yeah. So even when it comes about karma, I can say that they didn't deserve to win. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Uh, no, and it's also, well, along with your manager, I mean, yeah, he might have been the manager that won the 2002 World Cup, and there's obviously something that goes into that. But he also had R9. And Ronaldinho and Rivaldo and you know a golden era of Brazil. So it's been twenty years ago it does that, help. that you know that happened. Like if you really think mm-hmm. about it, I I, I yeah. won. That was the first World Cup I remember like clearly what happened each game oh, and etc. Nice. But yeah. it's still like it's still relatively you know a long time ago. Yeah. If you think about it, it's been two decades no, it of is. European or European domination. On mm-hmm. the World Cup, like level, yeah, two decades. It's, it's Italy, then Spain, Germany. Spain, Italy, Germany, France. Uh, France, yeah, you got it. Yeah, like, it's okay. Canada's gonna it. break that cycle and win it this year, so that's fine. But speak, <laughs> speaking, can you of imagine? Canada, they, no, dude, don't even get me started. I've thought about it too many times, but they did drop in the rankings, though. So maybe it's not as possible as I think it is for us to win the World Cup yeah. because now we're forty third. Well, like rankings doesn't mean anything, right? Belgium doesn't have a single meaningful international title and they're second. So don't don't get don't look at the ranking and get upset about it. But no, I think yeah. they deserve that to drop down. Period. Yeah, like, no, they definitely did. They uh, they like, they suck this this window, let's be honest. Like I mean, like if they played Iran, which is ranked twenty twenty one or something like that, yeah, and they beat Iran, they yeah. maybe would have even gone up. Losing, even yeah. Well, Iran's twenty because... third, so if we were to, yeah, we definitely would have gone above third. So just for you to closer. have an idea, the way that the FIFA ranking works is, uh, friendly matches count like you multiply friendly matches three points from the win. The number of the ranking of the other person like it counts in a punctuation. It's like a multiple. It's like a formula. So friendly okay, matches count, but the Curaçao match counted more because it's an actual, yeah, uh, league. Right? I see. I see. Yeah. But uh, because of the ranking of Iran. The punctuation would be really high. Winning Panama didn't make us anything. If the country is placed, if the country is placed first, you multiply by two hundred. If the country is placed a uh, hundred or one hundred and fifty, you multiply by fifty. So there is a big mm. difference of points that you I can see. gain from be- beating a team like on the top twenty than beating a team yeah. on the top eighty, on the top hundred. Yeah, you would lose like you lose three hundred, four hundred, five hundred points maybe. So uh, mm-hmm. that's why I think was the mistake was like if we played a better team than Panama and we properly organized that, that wouldn't happen. But because that yeah. happened, so not Panama, we sure. didn't play Panama. But I'm just saying, like, no, if we, it was, uh, yeah, yeah. If if, if the if plan we, was yeah. to play Panama, we actually played the uh, Iran like we had planned before. Maybe we could have done yeah. a better job. So I think, yeah, I think if we, I think if we even just played a game instead of canceling one, then it would have been better. Then I don't yeah, think because we went from 40th to 43rd, we're 10 points off of our greatest ever spot, which was right after we beat Mexico. I think, if I remember correctly, back in November when they did the rankings, then that was the highest we ever were, which is occupied by Austria right now. So, t- for us to even be in that sort of ranking or even close to that sort of kind of conversation is like it's so it's so big, like it's considering where Canada was. Our lowest ever ranking, let me just pull it up here. Our lowest ever ranking is 122nd. Yeah, that's awful. We, uh, they, we've, like, cut that into a third. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it's remarkable. And we've gone from back in 2016, we were 117th. And in, in six years, we've gone 
up like was that 80 yeah no it's 80 spots but i think canada went we went two years without losing a game right like um yeah we yeah it was what until 2019 2020 or 2020 2021 or something like that uh who because who did we lose to in the it was recently qualifiers it was recently. It was Costa Rica well, it was or something the world, like that. Yeah, one of those teams near the end. Yeah, um, if we didn't lose, that would still be undefeated until this Honduras game that recently happened. So we also we also this, scored. The, sorry, we also scored the most goals in the entire world for countries last in 2021. Yeah, we played Cayman Islands and fucking hey, hey, Katie's and no, Nevis. But <laughs> like, England, <laughs> England plays England plays San Marino. Right? I get it. I get you. Nervous, I get you. So I get you. No, not saying that it's, it's like it's not a, saying. Yeah, it's just you. You know, I, I a strong team in Concacaf on that first mm-hmm. phase. It's it, they shouldn't even be allowed. You should take like yeah. If you're in the top fifty from FIFA, you go like you go straight. Or if you're on the top I forty yeah. or top thirty, whatever, you go straight to like the last phase because like. It's, yeah, it's, I don't think we'll be in that, and we don't it think feels we'll bad. Cayman Islands ever again. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's 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 yeah. diminishing for their their team, and it's demotivating. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. those some of those folks are like, like they are playing on really small leagues in like Dominican Republic or something like that, and it's like they're yeah. trying to make it, and then you go play for your counter and you lose ten zero. Like it's it's not something you would like to do it again. So, uh, no, I would rather see them playing against themselves. And then the best go play against us. I'm not saying that we are better than all of them, but we are. Like just for you to see, we I mean, are with all the respect. But if you look at the power ranking right now, one of the teams that did the largest jump on the FIFA ranking was Cuba. You know yeah. why? Because really? Cuba is not hmm. playing this first division nation league. If they're playing the first division and they fall in a group with US yeah, or Canada, you happen what happened with Curacao. Cut us, cut us but because they are playing yeah. on the same level, they I think they moved up four positions on the ranking. Uh, so if you go to the FIFA mm. Instagram page, you can see the biggest winners of this yeah. last ranking edition. And what Cuba and was? Cuba was on that top four, right? So I was like, what? <laughs> like Cuba? Yeah. Uh, and that's the yeah, reason why, because they play, they play on, on the level that they should be playing, and that might make them evolve so they can reach a level and play a division. That's why I like the Conference League, because they split A, B, C kind of thing. And I think... Uh, like yeah just quickly my phone's got my phone's about to die soon so um but like i like i listened to a guy talk about the world cup qualifying and the format and he said like having it there's obviously this isn't a perfect way but having it similar to how they do the nations league and how they have specific divisions help qualifying teams that way so then you have a cup you'll have like one or two con- like big countries that don't qualify but then you have you give chances to these smaller ones that actually need funding and whatnot, and will help grow the game yep. a bit more. And you see different countries, and yeah, they might get smacked a bit more in the World Cup, but just a little different take, which I think would be kind of cool in my in my opinion. Yeah, if if FIFA can actually pull that off, that system yeah. of of uh, you know helping them as well, like sure, you know, FIFA historically mm-hmm. is corrupted. We all know that, but yeah. maybe <laughs> maybe one day. I, I'm not that I'm not as as intro having a a World Cup of like forty plus teams because of yeah. quality and 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 time because you once be you good. create a World Cup this time it needs to take almost two months to execute it or a month and a half and that's yeah. a month and a half without club football uh, mm-hmm. which no. a month is already a lot you know yeah uh, not not no. for me as a watch for good football might talk about the cost the operational cost for a club cost to pay players being tired millions of dollars for players and then players will take two months out of the 12 months to pay them so they can yeah. besides the vacation they already take to go yeah. uh play for a national team and you know not defend mm-hmm. your best interest right so yeah i don't know if it's a healthy thing yeah but all right we'll see but yeah that's pretty much it that's all i have to talk about glad that Canada is now going to win the World Cup, even though we're in 43rd. You know, we still, can, we still have a chance. You always have a chance. But, no, I'm glad. Hopefully, you guys were able to get something out of this podcast. It's been a pleasure, like always. Thanks, Felipe, for your wisdom. Thank you. And making this making this podcast authentic because you're from Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, I'm, I'm kind of... 
I'm I've been in Canada for 12 years, right? So I'm technically yeah. I mm-hmm. have roots here. My wife is from here, so um, I can say I'm half half. There you go. If, Perfect. And I'll tell you what: if the final is Canada and Brazil, I will cheer for Canada. I'll tell you why. I've seen my country winning before. It would be really cool to see Canada. So, yeah. and I'm also not in Brazil to be depressed after with everyone upset about me. Yeah, right. I'm in Canada. Well, it's so a win-win be... for you if that were to happen. Ugh. Yeah, exactly. It's a win-win. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, okay, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Like, subscribe, uh, share with a friend, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace out.